we are studying the book at the feet of the master written by j krishna murthy at his younger age he says there are four qualifications there are for this pathway one is discrimination desirelessness third is good conduct and love out of these four we have studied the first part the discrimination today we are going to study the desirelessness we will see what he has given in this part of desirelessness he says there are many for whom the qualification of desirelessness is a difficult one for they feel that they are their desires that if their distinctive desires their likings and dislikings are taken away from them there will be no self left but these are only the who have not seen the master in the light of his holy presence all desires die but the desire to be like him yet before you have the happiness of meeting him face to face you may attain desirelessness if you will discrimination has already shown you that the things which you which most men desire such as wealth and power are not worth having when this is really felt not merely said all desire for them ceases thus for all is simple it needs only that you should understand but there are some who forsake the pursuit of earthly aims only in order to gain heaven or to attain personal liberation from rebirth into this error you must not fall if you have forgotten self altogether you cannot be thinking when that self should be set free or what kind of heaven it shall have remember that all selfish desire bonds however high may be its object and until you get rid of it you are not wholly free to devote devote yourself to the work of the master when all desires for self are gone there may still be a desire to see the result of your work if you help somebody you want to see how much you have helped him perhaps even you want him to see too and to be grateful but this is still desire and also want of trust when you pour out your strength to help there must be a result whether you can see it or not if you know the law you know this must be so so you must do right for the sake of the right not in the hope of reward you must work for the sake of the work not in the hope of seeing the result you must give yourself to the service of the world because you love it and cannot help giving yourself to it have no desire for self psychic powers they will come when the master knows that it is best for you to have them to force them too soon often brings in its train much trouble often their possessor is misled by deceitful nature spirits or becomes conceited and thinks he cannot make a mistake and in any case the time and strength that it takes to gain them might be spent in work for others they will come in the course of development they must come and if the master sees that it would be useful for you to have them sooner he will tell you how to unfold them safely 
until then you are better without them you must guard to against certain small desires which are common in daily life never wish to shine or to appear clever have no desire to speak it is well to speak little better still to say nothing unless you are quite sure that what you want to wish to say is true kind and helpful before speaking think carefully whether what you are going to say has those three qualities if it is not do not say it it is well to get used even now to thinking carefully before speaking for when you reach initiation you must watch every word lest you should tell what must not be told much common talk is unnecessary and foolish when it is gossip it is wicked so be accustomed to listen rather than to talk do not offer opinions unless directly asked for them one statement of the qualifications gives them thus to know to dare to will and to be silent and the last of the four is the hardest of the all another common desire which you must internally repress is the wish to meddle in other men's business what another man does or says or believes is no affair of yours and you must learn to let him absolutely alone he has full right to free thought and speech and action so long as he does not interfere with anyone else <coughs> you yourself claim the freedom to do what you think proper you must allow the same freedom to him and he exercises if you have no right to talk about when he exercises it you have no right to talk about him if you think he is doing wrong and you can contrive an opportunity opportunity of privately and very politely telling him why you think so it is possible that you may convince him but there are many cases in which even that would be a that would be an improper interference and no account must you go and gossip to some third person about the matter for that is an extremely wicked action if you see a case of cruelty to a child or an animal it is your duty to interfere if you see anyone breaking the law of the country you should inform the authorities if you are placed in charge of another person in order to teach him it may become your duty gently to tell him of his faults except in such cases mind your own business and learn the virtue of silence